uh, another road trip video. In this weekend, I'm gonna travel from Oslo to Trondheim and back in a Hyundai Ioniq, a full electric one. There are two other fossil versions with uh, whatever, you know, but they are not interesting. This is the one you want, the full electric. So it has a 28 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, I think 25 kilowatt hour are usable. And this car is unlike other EVs because it is so efficient. It has the same drag coefficient as a Tesla Model S actually. And that's very important for getting uh, the consumption low. And it also has like, it's packed with so much equipment like freaking uh, auto stair ish Look ma, no hands. <laughs> it has freaking auto stair and well ish uh, because it will bug you after a while. So I'm gonna let go now and it has adaptive cruise control, lots of safety features like auto braking, uh, lane departure warning, um, blind spot warning. Oh, there you go. And then you have like convenience uh, features like uh, wireless charging, uh, seat heater, oh, obviously seat heater, um, uh, steering wheel heater, but ventilated seats <laughs> and lots and lots of other goodies. So I'm going to come back to that later. So I want to prove now that, you know, I've been driving all over Norway and Europe with a Tesla, but a Tesla is very, very expensive. This car only costs like one third of a Tesla or at least a half a Tesla and it actually has some nice features that even a Tesla doesn't have uh, so many people who want to you know, move to electric car why don't you consider this one so I, will, I will prove that this car can do it almost as good as Tesla on long trips and this in Norway we have plenty of uh, charging stations fast DC chargers so um, I know this trip is gonna be a piece of cake <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, my first destination is not a supercharger, it is a fast charger somewhere, I don't know where yet, so um, maybe Lillehammer, I'm gonna go Gudbrandsdal on one direction and then on the way back I will go uh, Österdal, so then we get a little bit more variation, yeah. in uh, Brummedal at McDonald's and uh, here we have one of Fortum's uh, fast chargers so the consumption is freaking high not for the car but for wiper fluid so I have to get some wiper fluid and that's good because um, yeah then I'm gonna charge so I will show you now how easy it is to charge so I'm just gonna plug it in here uh, let me see there okay open the charge port and this one uses CCS Okay, and then we have the CCS plug. So we have to plug in first. Like that. Okay. And then, uh, start. Use the RFID. Okay, checking. Come uh, on, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, unfortunately, I can't see the speed, the charging speed in the car or in here so the charger doesn't say anything but we can figure that out if we look at the time and uh, power delivered yes yeah, so we're gonna stay for a while um let me see i think i'm gonna go to uh, esso meanwhile um yeah i have to get some viper fluid and man this car well okay there's another car just arrived here uh, 
years old. The car is freaking insane! It is so efficient! <laughs> I was cruising at 190, yeah, not 190, 100 or 90, because this car has studded tires, so you don't want to drive too fast to wear down the studs, so that's why I cruise at 100 kilometers per hour maximum. So um, it has pretty good, I would say, better consumption than uh, a Model S facelift. Uh, because this is in winter, we have studded tires, you know, more more resistance, uh, wet roads. So I would assume that in summer we get like 150 watt hour per kilometer at 90, 100 kilometers per hour. Yes, all right. Uh, I'm gonna stay for a while then. Okay. I went for two bags, three liter each. Is that well? You get a little discount if you buy two. Bag. So I get the impression that I'm gonna spend a lot uh, because I'm making video. Uh, so much schmutz, salt schmutz fest. But you know what? Uh, I think I'm not gonna stay here too long because uh, uh, I'm a bit concerned about the other car, uh, the Kia Soul. Uh, they wanted to charge too, and I don't have to stay here that long. I mean, I almost did all my business I needed here. Went to the restroom bought some stuff uh, and uh, we can take a look at the charging soon i'm just gonna put it here okay uh, so because i can always just charge in one of the other charging stations on the way there so plenty of them you see it, they share the same charger the chadamo plug and the ccs plug so this, this one is waiting for me to finish you see that i've been here for uh uh, eight minutes now, eight and a half minutes, getting uh, yeah, six kilowatt hours. So uh, I might stay there for like ten more minutes, and when I stop the charging, then the other one will start automatically. Yeah, uh, there's also a 22 kilowatt AC here over here, but the problem with these small cars is that they, they cannot utilize that fast speed, they can only utilize you know the 230 volt, uh, whatever. So this one can potentially deliver. 22 kilowatts, but you can only get usually 3.7 to 7.4 kilowatt of that. So uh, yeah, the DC is a much better deal for these cars. Only Tesla and uh, some other cars like Zoe and uh, Mercedes-Benz can utilize it. So um, just gonna wait here for a while. Wait, I have to check. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna look how it looks like in the boot. Oh, <laughs> <to> unlock. <laughs> not used to that. Okay, it's not like. Comfort. Well, they have some comfort access. I don't have to stick the key anywhere. You see, there's a button. There are like lots of buttons here. How do we open the boot? Here. Okay, okay. Oh, the frunk. Well, this car doesn't have a frunk. What? Shit. I'll be right back after the commercial. All right. Here is the frunk. Looks like this. Oh. What the heck? How do I keep the... Okay, okay, it's not that... Uh, we have to have this... That was a bit unfortunate. Most other cars, they you know, they have uh, hydraulics to keep it uh, up. But I guess they want to make it inexpensive in this car. So, <clears throat> there's no engine in here. It's just an electric motor in the front. This is the front-wheel drive. 120 horsepower. 290 newton meter of torque. Pretty powerful. You still have a battery, a 12 volt battery. All electric cars have um, like a low um, low voltage circuit, this one, and also high voltage battery. So they are of course separated. I believe this was something to do with the uh, with the heat exchanger. This has a heat exchanger, freaking uh, efficient stuff. Uh, but I have to say, most car manufacturers. I'm not gonna try. I'm not trying to be a, like a Tesla fan here. I'm trying to be. You know, as neutral as possible, but they haven't utilized the space good enough. You see here, there's some space here, like over here, and then over there, and then over there, and then they could have packed it slightly better. Uh, so I'm not gonna compare directly to Tesla because the Tesla is so freaking expensive. But if we compare it to BMW i3, they actually have a small front, a front trunk where you can put some charging cables and some stuff in it so they they actually managed to pack it slightly better to have a small uh, one there and that's uh, very useful sometimes yeah okay now i have to figure out where the freaking 
windscreen wiper fluid is. It's over here, I guess. Washer, yeah. This one. The other stuff is just, uh, I don't know what the heck it is. Yeah. All right, let's fill it up. We have been here for half an hour, gained a lot of juice, and uh, just to be nice to the other car, I unplugged my cable so he will get juice now. So right now I'm actually charging on the on the AC. Yeah, I'm using the onboard uh, charger. And you know what? I did some calculation. So based on the numbers we've seen so far, that one, well, in Tesla world, it's uh, it's uh, 168 watt hour per kilometer. And then looking at the, as these numbers. I actually, oh, what the heck, that is very annoying. I want to see the numbers. <coughs> so I estimate that we have a whopping 27 kilowatt hour of available energy. So, uh, 27 kilowatt hour, all right? And then let's assume <coughs> it's, uh, charging at 200%, it's kind of slow. So uh, let me do some calculations here. Okay, so 90% then, 90% times 27 was oh, a whooping 24 kilowatt hour okay and then 24 if I assume I have 24 kilowatt hour are available and we are going to drive 153 kilometers to destination okay and then you take this one times 1000 to get watt hour and then divide it by 153 so then I can average 158 hmm that could be kind of yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it <laughs> because um, um, consumption so far is 168, so I estimate 100. Yeah, but then again, on the other hand, uh, you see here the the average speed was 189. I was cruising at 90 to 100. What the heck? Stop doing that! Uh, <clears throat> so I can actually assume slightly lower consumption. Yeah. Okay. We'll see then. Um, yeah, because that's also another problem. You don't want to stay too long and charge too slow. So, um, yeah. There's actually another car now. All right, I, I need some leaf. So we have a leaf. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the leaf is also waiting for um, another charge. But you know what? I don't know what they are up to, to the other guys, but um, on, uh, let me see here. I have this other map. This map is okay, I guess, but I prefer um, Fortum's, um up here, what the heck, what are you doing? Okay, so if you look here on the photo map, there are tons of chargers around there. So you can also use the third party map, but um, I use Fortum's map because they actually give you real time status. For instance, over here, I'm going that way, so I have plenty of other chargers I can choose between. So I would prefer the chargers close to uh, the main road here. I don't, I don't want to drive like a detour to get over there. And then it says that this one... <laughs> oh, what? Okay, just, I have big fingers. Oh, okay, you can't, you can't have that. Okay. So you see, oh, stop that, oh, I'm a noob. Okay, there you go. It tells me that uh, one of the chargers at McDonald's is uh, occupied, but the other one is available. So I could go there, but... Uh, now let's just leap forward to um, Uta. Yeah, we have 91 kilometers. I'm sorry, 191% now. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, been idling here a little bit too long. I might idle a bit longer because you know what I have to do? <laughs> I forgot to, to show you guys um, the cargo I'm carrying. Uh, yeah, you see, this is why. I mean, most people would just keep on going. Uh, but. Um, I'm doing with this uh, documentary, so that's why I stay here a little bit longer. So we're carrying a freaking huge furniture here. This is not a small one, it's freaking, I don't know, it's like one meter tall or something. Lots of space because, of course, the seats will fall down flat in, the, in Ionic. And I just washed it yesterday. Oh, man. Uh, what I'm missing though in the Ionic is just like in a small legs. Um, hooks for securing the load. So I have to use these hooks that hold uh, the seats in place. So that works, you know. It reminds me of the old days with the molars. 
<laughs> better than the Falcon. This works, we still have more space here, so I actually wonder if it is possible to sleep in the car. But then, we have to have a trick to keep the heater running, but that should be possible. Yeah, do the same thing, you know, just like keep the car running. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There are so many cool, nice features about this car, like perforated seats. They are um, ventilated. You actually have electric seats with memory. You have auto falling mirrors, auto tilt mirrors. Let me see, I'm going inside here. We actually have uh, here a room for stuff in both doors. You have this uh, this space here where you, you can uh, wirelessly charge your phone. Look here. That's freaking awesome! <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have auto heel hole, we have heated steering wheels, uh, park sensors, and um, there's like a uh, touch screen here. Oh, so there's so much buttons over here. Like, uh, what do we have here? We have adaptive cruise control, that lane, lane, uh, like I would say, uh, lane assist. Yeah, it's auto steer ish. That's that button over there. Uh, of course, uh, automatic wipers, that's pretty common nowadays. Uh, there's uh, so many features, I, I can't remember all of them. <laughs> oh yeah, and also safety, safety features like uh, automatic braking. Um, oh, we have that uh, over there the, on each mirror. A blind spot warning. Uh, it actually, the screen here, when we start driving, it will show you the speed limit. So it reads speed limit signs. Pretty impressive. And of course you have this uh, touch, touch screen, uh, uh, let me see if I go uh, navigation, well okay let's go home, okay then you have like lots of stuff here, uh, radio and I haven't, haven't played around with too much of that, it's very in intuitive and easy to, to you know navigate and use, uh, I, I wanted to find out how to change some display settings, I went in here, you know, okay so you want to have it all or I want, I want to have the night mode. Okay, night mode, brightness, okay, you can always go back here, daytime, navigation, language, I switched language by the way, I didn't want Norwegian, it's easier for you guys to understand, my menu, I don't know, okay, and then there's some buttons here, so press the EV button, you get some information about EV, range, energy information, once we start driving, these numbers will show you, consumption, that's really cool! Battery information here. I mean, let me go back here. Uh, nearby stations. You can do it like this. I will show you all the stations. I don't know what the heck, like what kind of API uses to know all this because it, I haven't been here. And I asked the owner, they haven't been here. Unlike Tesla, you have to be at the, at the charging station for it to know that it's there. But here, you, you get it from somewhere. You will have this nice menu where it shows you how, you know, eco you are. Mine was like three, which is pretty bad. It's like an F, I fail, eco driving. You have EV settings here, like uh, you can actually change how fast you want to charge, but it doesn't say how many amps, so that's just like the i3, you know, it just show you the amp, huh? Uh, so that's a bit unfortunate, let's see, um, some, one cool thing is here, drive mode setting, so there's a button here, the drive mode here, that changes the behavior of the, uh, the car, so you see, um, now we are in sport mode. Everything changes, the colors. This is the eco mode, the green one. Uh, this is normal. So normal is normal, okay? In sport mode, you see that the, the, the gauge here changes. This is actually a screen. It's not like analog shit here. It's just a nice screen. So the gauge will change to power in percentage. And then the power in percentages, I guess this one can output 90 kilowatt max. So, you know, 10% is uh, nine, uh, 9 kilowatt, yeah, or you can like, roughly say almost, you know, if you round up, you could say like 10% is almost 10 kilowatt. So it will, when you start driving, I'm going to show you, it will actually, you know, look and feel more or less like a Tesla. And then in the center, you have the speed, but if you change drive mode to eco, the range will be in the center, and then you have the speed there. So I actually pref prefer, perform, uh, sorry, I prefer 
uh, I was about to say the performance. This one, better, because you have the speed in the center and you have the power output. So, um, but uh, it also changes the, like the, how the, the throttle responds. It's very responsive, almost too responsive in sport mode compared to the Eco. Well, in Eco, it's kind of sluggish. Yeah, uh, but with all these three modes, you can also change how the car will you know, perform. In Eco mode, for instance, you want Eco climate control or normal. Yeah, and also you want you have like coast energy level, like how this is like you know region, how strong the region will be. You can you can change that setting and save it. And also in the Eco mode, you can also have a maximum speed limit. Uh, you say normal, you can't choose the maximum speed, but you can still choose the level of region. And the region can also be adjusted with this paddle thing. You know, I, I mentioned earlier that the, the Ionic comes with two other models which has gasoline engines, and these ones are probably used for changing gears. But in oh, sorry, sorry, but in here, you know, you still have the same uh, hardware, so they just gave it uh, a function. So I think it actually is somewhat useful. Um, all right, sport default, yeah, whatever. So you see, I've been uh, messing around here for a while now and <laughs> I'm actually at 94%. So you know that high speed, uh, well, I would say the, the high, the 32 amp charger in this car, which is standard. It's not standard on um, most other EVs in this class, but it's very useful from time to time when you're gonna charge slow on AC to gain this speed. So I would say, I mean, most cars in this class should get at least the 32 amp charger. It is so nice and even better, get the 400 volt. If I was, if I had 400 volt, I would be at 100% or close to 100% now. Yeah, but anyway, I've been talking a lot, so um, I guess uh, we can get going now. driving now and I'm gonna show you some of the features with this awesome car so uh, it has auto steer yeah I would say I would call it auto steer ish you see the green there it will actually steer for you but I'm gonna let off the wheel now and then it stares a little bit and then it bugs me so I just had to nudge it a bit and then it will steer for like five to ten seconds without me touching it oh you see, but it's not it's not as good as Tesla, but you know, it is a step forward. So it's very useful. I usually have my hands on it and I don't have to pay too much attention. I mean, I paid attention to the road, but yeah, it will help me from time to time when I'm busy doing something else. And um, you see now, this is the sport mode. You can see the power output and the gauge and then the speed there. And we are in cruise control mode, so that's why these handles, they don't do anything yet. I have to uh, switch off cruise control. Let me try to do that. So it's a little bit clumsy here. Uh, let me see, mode, okay, I have to press the zero. Okay, and then these pedals, they will uh, adjust the regenerate the brakes. Now we are actually in coast mode. I'm going to test that later. The regen is off, so it will just roll, free roll. And that is actually very useful in order to save the most energy. Um, okay, let me put it back in, uh, yeah, whatever here, let me say, oh yeah, harder and harder regen mode. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you something else here. If you go to EV button here, and then to the energy information, you can see, oh, I have one more energy consumption. Oh, okay, come on, there, there, look at that. Freaking awesome screen. <laughs> okay, so, now it shows me that I'm regening energy, gaining energy, okay. Coming to a turn, a roundabout, gonna regen more. Okay, slow down and then accelerate out. Yeah, that's very useful if you wanna figure out what consumes a lot of energy. And as you can see, electronics inside the car or outside the car, I mean, like lights, music, whatever, you know, 
doesn't really consume that much. Climate, yes, consumes some. And driving is what consumes the most energy. But, I mean, in order to save energy just to get there, well, you could switch off the climate control, but not today. <laughs> Minus four degrees Celsius outside. take the car is in sport mode oh yeah looks clear all right Achtung das schnell electro auto from uh, Korea is coming <laughs> in Utta and uh, I was gonna charge but there is a problem not with the car this you know icing icing means that you know internal combustion engine cars will block the charging uh, site uh, over here we have a different story this is actually an e-golf electric golf parked here for no effing reason I need to juice up I have like 5% left and <laughs> they're not charging they just parked over here so I think I will um, maybe plug it in or I have to get the, the owner because this is the last charging uh, station at least the fast charger before uh, I don't know but I need juice so yeah this is not good manner bad bad panda Oh, oh well, I was a bit lucky, whoever parked there left, so I took the spot, and you see I had to park really close, oh, yeah, just to get the cable, see, this is not optimal, I have to stand, I had to park like an idiot, just so I can plug in, because this is the only super, <laughs> sorry, not the super, this is the only fast charger nearby, so now the mission is to find that idiot who parked over there. All right, you see the eagles over there, yeah. The owner came, I called, I searched for the owner. <laughs> I told them, charging spot is not a parking spot. So they came here and they were like, oh, woo, woo, and then they moved the car. So you know what, I should move my car. Well, the car I borrowed, uh, because now I'm kind of taking up two spots here. So I'm going to move the car and then I can finally go inside and uh, take a restroom break and all that stuff. But anyway, oh, um, hey, hey, okay. <laughs> so, uh, this leaf owner came, yeah, and they're like, "Are you Bjorn? <laughs> <laughs> so you're from? Uh, We're from Iceland. From Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. And also, you have like your husband is. Yes, yeah. my husband has see, has seen all your videos, <laughs> and because of them, we just bought this. Uh, electric car nice yes nice but he would like to have a tesla yes yep no, but, uh, pro tip get this one the ionic is so nice yeah <laughs> it's awesome yeah yeah maybe next car yeah maybe <laughs> yeah probably i would say it's i mean for the for the money this car is as good as a tesla it costs one third of a tesla okay and um, and the battery is but, it good yeah, I, I drove 150 kilometers. Okay. In one charge. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> in winter, it's yeah. cold. I'm shaking. It's yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it can do that. The car. <laughs> yeah. We um, 
We live in Sunnyfjord, so uh -huh. this is our first long trip. Wow, you came from Sunnyfjord? Yeah. This is the, the 30 kilowatt hour then? Uh, the new one? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that must uh, be the new he one. He has all the numbers. Yeah, I just must... drive it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, whoa, wow, nice to meet you guys. Yeah, yeah you yes. too. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Man, you know, I was just gonna take a better burger over here. And then all this stuff happened and then mess around. And then now I actually move to the other spot now. So I don't take up two spots. But anyway, so I had to grab a hot dog because the charging, well, we are at 91% and it says charging is done in four minutes. So now I believe that uh, that buffer in this car is at the very top also. Maybe also, yeah, there should be also a buffer in the bottom, but also like buffer in the top. So it charges really fast to 100% even on like a fast charger like this. So that's pretty nice. Oh yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. It's like a, it's like a große Bratwurst mit Brot. Something like that, yeah. Hmm. We have been here for almost an hour, uh, which is totally in, in not necessary. But you know what? I figured that since I'm here already, I'm gonna test the range. And I mentioned already two times that um, at least at this average speed, I can get about 160 kilometers or 100 miles in winter condition. Keep in mind, it is minus six degrees Celsius outside. I don't know how many Fahrenheit that is, like 20 something Fahrenheit, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna charge you 100% and then I will see how far I get. I mean, I have to get over there. So yes, you know, before you are, all, all you guys say like, oh, so just when, like waste so much time charging. Well, yeah, that is true today. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna drive Usterdon much, much better. Uh, so today it'll be like the day where I measured the capacity and so far two times um, I have estimated that the capacity, available capacity, is actually a whooping 27 kilowatt hour, which is quite a lot. Hmm, I was expecting 25 only. And this one has a 28 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I'm wondering, is it really 28 or is it more? Maybe it's 30? I don't know, but at least according to my calculation, it's 27. So, um, but that is very important information because I need that. Tomorrow, when I uh, start uh, you know, driving back uh, to estimate the range I need, because tomorrow I will not stop and charge to 100%. I will charge to like 80, 70%, which is a lot faster. Uh, yeah, all right. A little bit more, and then off we go. for a Tesla but it's uh, kind of high for this car but on the other hand we are uh, pretty high up in the elevation and the, the charging station in uh, Baikok is uh, let's see where is it we have 105 well I don't care too much about the range but the range is just an estimation but I have to look at the, the percentage and I did an estimation from here to the charging station I can average 165 uh, so it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh -huh. Let me zoom, zoom a little bit more. There, there. Yeah. So just to be sure, I dropped my speed to 70 kilometers per hour, and I also tried to use some eco mode. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for one time, the first time in the trip, I'm trying to conserve a little bit of energy. But uh, as soon as I see that I'll make it, then I'll speed up again. So, you know, I just want to have it nice and comfortable in here, 21 degrees Celsius. Oh, this is a pretty cool um, energy saving feature. So I'm going to zoom in there, so you see the button, it says driver only. Oh, hang on, there, yeah. 
driver only and it's enabled now but it will only heat up the driver's area so um, I'm going to show you now uh, we have consumption of about one a little over one kilowatt 1.2, 1.1 around there okay then we're gonna switch off the driver only the fan start blowing slightly harder and you see consumption go, goes up for heating yeah so it's really nice because I'm traveling alone right now so I can have that driver only set just to squeeze out energy oh yeah Oh yeah, we are coasting. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. Yeah, so I can like activate some brakes here if I need to. See, now we are losing speed. Or disable it and just coast. <laughs> so yes, I've been coasting downhill for a while now. And look here. Oh, my eco level is at eight. I'm a ninja. I wonder if 10 is maximum or something. Or eight. I don't know. We are now at Fortum Charger in Bairkog. So uh, I've been charging for a while, actually not too long. Uh, it came over 10%. And if you look here on the trip, uh, let me show you here. So I did almost, uh -huh, almost 163 kilometers. Slightly slow in the beginning, but then I drove faster. And average, uh, <laughs> quite low, wow. So you know, basically this car, uh, the Ionic will have about half the the, the range of uh, let's say the cheapest Model S or yeah let's say Model S or X, uh, but they cost like two and a half, uh, uh, two to three times more than this one. So I think that's pretty good. You know, if you can't afford a Tesla, get one of these because you have so much equipment here. Like I explained earlier, yeah. Why do I look like a lobster? I think the light, the temperature in this light is like. A little bit off yeah but anyway i think i'm gonna um, have to go to the restroom uh, we have shell over there uh, i rarely stop here well okay uh when i have a trailer i stop here but uh i can go to the restroom and then um let me see what's the time uh, it's estimates okay what 28 minutes until i finish yeah and i have to uh call some people because i have some nimmer task remember this one uh well actually this is not a nimmer task but i have two nimmer tasks this is uh someone I've been delivered for before so I'm starting to get more of those guys but um, yeah so we're gonna stay for a while and I think from here to uh, Trondheim let me see actually let me see ooh, ooh, map okay uh, how did this there no it's wrong Na nav okay uh, if I just enter an address address uh, Trondheim Tron Okay, then we get to on him. All right. Okay, I, you don't have to enter uh, like a street. I think we'll just go to the city center. So, uh, 83, 84 kilometers. That's plenty. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to show you something interesting. Start guidance. Okay. All right. But let's say if I want to go to, you can have like waypoints here and shit. Look here. Okay. Um, address. Let's say I want to go via Orkanger. Ork, Orkanger. Orkanger, okay. All right. Add tour point. Oh, I'm a noob. 
I think, how do you do this? Trondheim, Wolfgangel. Can I do this? Whoa! Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. What, what, what happens now? It's a bit confusing. Oh, you see, see? You can have waypoints. You can, you can have multiple waypoints. <gasps> oh, I want this in my Tesla. <laughs> and then, it's, yeah, I see the, 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 the new distance at 120. 20. Okay, so what if I go there and then I, navigation, uh, previous destinations, uh, Trondheim, and then I can do uh, change destination. And then this will, this will be a new, my new direct destination. Start guidance. Wow. It's pretty cool. I love touchscreen, even though it's small, but you know, size actually matters. Yeah, as a nation, I'm saying size actually matters. Uh, what, oh, what the heck? I'm wasting my time now. Oh, 37% already. Uh, let's do stuff here. Oh, yeah, I went for a burger. But look here what happens when I enter the car. The seat slides forward. This is the feature with the Ionic. The seat will go backward. <laughs> I'm gonna open the door now. Okay, I'm gonna sit here to see what happens. It goes backwards. It's brilliant. Oh, I changed my mind. Oh. <laughs> Why can't Tesla have this? It's just a software update. All right, but anyway, um. All right, let me see. Let me see. I think I was gone for a while, I don't know, the burger took forever to finish and I heard that there's a feature with this car, uh, the Ionic, it, it will stop fast charge at 94%. Let me see, do, do, do. okay, whatever, you see, it stops at 94%, it's a feature, it's not a bug, it's just the way it is, so, alright, whatever, we're good to go, just gonna unplug and then uh, eat, yeah. I'm now at the supercharger in Klet, but I'm not gonna charge her. Um, and I pick up a, a box here with uh, Christmas presents. It's gonna be delivered in Hama tomorrow. And, um, hmm. Look at that freaking consumption! <laughs> 131 watt hour per kilometer. That is because of uh, downhill, of course. Yeah, so uh, we still have a lot of juice left. 119 kilometers. I have to drive around. City, not too many tasks, but I have a few tasks. So I have to go to Lade over there. Yeah, and I also have to, yeah, that, that's for the, the furniture. So yeah, I'm gonna drive around a bit. Alright, first deliver for today, which is a large furniture. I'm gonna show you here. It's been wrapped. Uh, okay, okay, uh, let me get some lights here. But uh, I could almost fit two of those in this, I would say, small electric car. <laughs> Look how big it is. <laughs> you know, I wonder if it's possible to sleep in the back here. Maybe I should try it one other day. Yeah, so uh, not too many tasks this weekend, but uh, that's fine. Alright, 
the last pickup for today. Uh, I'm gonna pick up an item for a friend. And this guy lives like in not my friend, but the, the, the sender lives in the forest or something. Oh. Uh, and he's not home, so I was given instructions where to find the item, and then I was supposed to, you know, give him money to hide it somewhere under a rock or something. Oh. So yeah, it's gonna be another night now with questing and then I'll go to my uh, uh, again. my cousin yeah who lives over here uh, okay uh, there seems to be someone home uh, the TV is on but I guess it's not the guy who's home maybe the, the woman is home but here's the thing I'm gonna pick up yeah it's in the box, so that's good. It doesn't seem too clean. I think I can lift it. Oh, it's kind of heavy, but uh, I was given instruction to put the money under the mat. I think the door mat over right here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it here. It's just it's just 200 nook, which is like nothing. You can you might be able to buy half a burger for that money. Yeah, that's how expensive everything in Norway is. But here it is. It's freaking, freaking slippery, man. Oh, it's gonna be so nice when I go to uh, Thailand. We're gonna go to Thailand on vacation. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. But, oh well, we got work to do. So, hey! Hi! Dad and I, I'm gonna hand it in. Also, I have lagt 200 kroner there, borte. Yeah. Yes, um, so yes, I need both hands now. back here my cousin's house so I'm gonna actually sleep in a warm bed tonight and then tomorrow we go back to Oslo yeah pretty rough test huh <laughs> oh yes all right good night then